Okay. So we want you to walk away with a plan to generate 30 leads in 30 days. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about lead generation, a little bit of theory, and then we're going to get into building a campaign. And we're going to do this in a way that you can replicate it and you'll be able to do a version one, then a version two, and you'll be able to improve it and improve it. Okay, here we go. Let's get in and let's talk about the lead generation. Okay, so first thing, quality lead generation. This is a big deal for business. One of the things that I see that frustrates me all the time is I see a lot of entrepreneurs put a huge amount of time into things that are not lead generation, right? They're not generating demand. And the reason I say this is frustrating is because ultimately, as my mentor once said to me, everything is downstream from lead generation. If you cannot generate leads, it doesn't matter how good the product is. If you can't get people interested in it, then you could have the most incredible all singing, all dancing product or service. But if people are not signaling interest in it, <clears throat> then it's of no use. On the flip side, if you don't even have a finished product, if you've just got a product idea, but you can generate hundreds and hundreds of leads of people who are interested, then you're going to be doing very well. You can solve almost every other problem from there. A great example of this would be Elon Musk. Elon Musk very famously launches things that aren't ready all the time. A great example would be the Cybertruck. So he puts a Cybertruck example up on the stage and he says, this is going to be here in three years from now. And something like a million people put a $100 deposit down for a Cybertruck in the USA. And he went to JP Morgan and he raised all the money to build the factories and all of that sort of stuff. So because he mastered the lead generation first, JP Morgan was willing to give him the money to do everything else that he needed to do after the lead generation. So at a very small scale or a very big scale, lead generation comes first. Your ability to manufacture demand is everything in your business. I see so many people tinkering away with their services and their products and they're tinkering away with this, that, and the other. And ultimately, they're not generating enough demand. I'll give you a little example. I spoke to a guy who used to be a very senior executive for a very large household name brand. And he wanted to launch as an executive business coach. And he was building all these kind of portals and he was building all of these login areas and recording videos. And I said, I think you'd be better off just standing up in front of an audience and telling them your story and telling them some of the things you've done and just stick a QR code on the screen with a scorecard and collect a bunch of leads and then talk to people. <laughs> you make it sound so simple. And I'm like, it really is that simple. So he ended up sponsoring an event with about 400 people, stood up on stage, gave a talk, told his story, put the QR code up, about 30, 40% of the audience filled in the scorecard and away he goes, launches the business. And that's basically all he needed to do. So he was over-engineering the supply side and he wasn't manufacturing enough demand. So the key thing here is demand generation is absolutely everything. Lead generation is everything. What is a lead, right? Just starting at the basics, a lead is a signal of interest. It's a clear signal of interest. It's when someone puts up their hand and says, I'm interested in what you do. They're not yet buying. They're doing something that is a precursor, a pre-step from, from buying, right? So for example, let's say that business coach example, a sale is when someone signs up and actually signs the contract and says, yep, here's my $20,000. I want you to be my coach. A lead generation campaign would be anything where people are joining a waiting list, joining a group, registering for an event, doing a scorecard, any of those things, those are lead generation steps. So essentially people come out from the shadows, they put their hand up and they say, hey, I'm interested in what you do. So this is lead generation. Essentially, you're not making a sale, but you're collecting signals of interest. People are, You're giving people an easy way to signal that they're interested in working with you. So this is the first thing that you need to do. Collect signals of interest. Get more and more signals of interest. That is what pushes prices up. If you knew that you had 5,000 people who had signaled interest in working with you, you would feel pretty confident having high prices. And if someone asked you for a discount, you'd say, no, thank you very much. I don't need to give discounts. I've got plenty of people who have signaled interest in working with me at this price. Signals of interest is everything. Those of you that have read the book Oversubscribed, you know that the final chapter that I wrestled with, I actually put at the end of the book, there's a chapter in this book that I wrestled with. I said, I'm, there's one chapter, I wasn't sure if I was going to put it in or not because it's so good. It's the chapter called Market for Signals, Not Sales. Get those signals of interest going first. Okay, so we're, that's what we want to do. 
So my background, I've tried a lot of different things with signal collection and, and lead generation. My first ad campaigns in the newspaper, I've run big events, I've done all the social media, the email, the phones, all of that sort of stuff. So I've experienced all the different types of lead generation. And what we're going to talk to today is the best that I've ever done. But before I get into that, I do want to say that in 2023, lead generation really does suck. It's gotten really bad for a lot of companies. And I'll tell you why it's bad. The first reason it's bad is that growth requires exponentially more leads. So as you're a small business, let's say you're a business that does less than 100,000 of revenue, you actually don't need that many leads. You probably need a couple of hundred leads and you can do the first six figures of revenue depending on what sort of business you've got. But you don't need that many leads. But as you try and scale, you need exponentially more leads. And the reason for that is because the bigger the business, the lower the conversion, right? Big businesses get low conversion. So small businesses might convert 10% of their leads into sales. Big businesses, it's closer to 2% of leads getting converted into sales, right? So it's, it's dropping exponentially as you're scaling. So you actually need a lot of leads. The bigger companies that I work with, they literally, they're generating tens of thousands of leads per year in order to maintain their seven and eight figure revenue. And then they need to generate tens of thousands, to hundreds of thousands of leads in order to generate eight, nine figure revenue. So you need lots and lots of leads if you want to scale. The issue that we've got right now is people have very short memories and they're easily distracted because of social media and because of all the different screens and all the different stuff that's coming at people. They forget that they're actually engaging with different businesses. They're just roaming around with short memories, easily getting distracted. You've probably noticed this. Maybe you've been guilty of it. And the next thing is that people expect a personal touch from your business, but they don't want to talk to anyone at the very end. So the latest research about how people buy says that people do tons of research online. They experience as much as seven hours with a brand or a business. They experience as many as 11 interactions with a brand or a business before they then want to talk to a salesperson. So it used to be like this. It used to be if I was interested in a guitar, let's say, I would go down the guitar shop and I would talk to the guitar shop guy and we would have a conversation about guitars. And I would do that pretty early in the buying cycle. So in the olden days, right, prior to the internet, one of the first things that I would do is talk to someone about my purchasing decisions. But where we are today in 2023 is that the very, very last thing I might do is talk to someone. I'm going to do a ton of research first. I'm going to be online. I'm going to be watching videos and looking at social media accounts, reading blogs and articles. I'm going to be doing all of that stuff first. And only at the very end do I talk to someone in sales. And it's actually so bad that if you try and talk to a customer too early in the sales cycle, if you pick up the phone and talk to them, they're going to say, hey, I'm not ready to talk to someone. They treat you like you're a hostage negotiator, <laughs> someone ransoming their family member or something, right? It's a, it's a high hostile situation. Nobody wants to talk to that salesperson early on in the sales cycle. So it's really gotten difficult because many of us, if we're older than 40, we are totally comfortable with this idea that we just pick up the phone and talk to people, but customers aren't wanting to do that anymore. They want to talk to someone only at the very end once they feel that they've done some research. So that makes lead generation a really special challenge or making sales as a special challenge. Here's the three big areas that most businesses are suffering. Not enough leads. So the quantity of leads is not high enough. Low conversion. So the lead quality isn't very good and they don't actually convert or unworkable costs. When you add up the costs of the CRM system, the ads, the salespeople, the appointment setters, all of that sort of stuff, it becomes far too expensive to be viable. So essentially you end up with this trifecta of not enough leads, low converting leads and unworkable costs. So essentially the lead generation slows down and stops. And if that happens, the business growth stops and the profitability stops, right? So that puts a cap on the, on the business. Where do we want to go? We want to go to leads that come in from digital assets that are scalable and shareable. We want something that is useful, fun, and remarkable that people love to share. And it's simple, cheap, and effective to use. So essentially, that's what we're going to talk about today with scorecards because they're available 24-7. They convert at five to 10 times the standard website. In fact, we recently crunched 1.5 million leads that are sitting on the score app platform. We found that the average landing page to get started with the scorecard conversion was 42%. I can tell you that's about 10 times better than any other landing page conversion. 
they collect buckets of relevant data. Every person who fills in a scorecard, you're getting lots of data. <clears throat> they deliver a personal touch. They're perfect for warming people up or confidently converting, right? So all of that. For those of you who don't know my background with scorecards, it really, for me, it started in a big way in 2015 when I released the Key Person of Influence book. On page 50, I think it was, we put in this little ad and it just said, take the Key Person of Influence quiz. When people typed in the, the URL, they got taken to this page here where they were asked their details, answer a series of questions, lots of yes or no questions. And once they'd answered 40 questions, they got this report on the screen. And that then took them to a booking where they got to talk to one of the members of my team. And the beauty of this is that my team had all the relevant data and they could have a really great look at the customer first before picking up the phone and talking to them. So what was really nice is that they could start the conversation something like this. You took the key person of influence scorecard yesterday. The high score was for partnerships, 87%. Your lowest score was for pitching, 26%. I'm wondering, would you like to improve that score? And everyone says yes. So suddenly we had something that was very automated and personal and people just loved it. I've got a slide here that says 90,000 leads and 15 million in sales. It's actually over 100,000 leads and 20 million in sales now. This slide is a couple of more than a year old. So it's actually over 100,000 leads and 20 million in sales. So it's been a great campaign and it hasn't really changed since 2016. It's been an ongoing campaign that just runs and runs. Over the last several years, I've seen lots of different organizations using scorecards. I've noticed these on the NHS website now. So the National Health Service has a mental health scorecard that you can take. Major wealth planners are using this on their website. In fact, this is the front page of a major wealth company. What's your money personality? And it's a personality test that people can take. There are big ones like the five love languages. If any of you have ever been to couples therapy with, with a therapist, one of the first things they'll always do is get you to take the love languages scorecard. And then you'll find out that your partner wants gifts. All of those words of praise that you've been giving them mean nothing to them. They just want presents or you'll find out something like that. You might've taken the 16 personalities test, right? 16 personalities. I cannot believe it. 806 million people have taken this test to find out if they too have a personality. And it turns out they do, one of 16 personalities that are going around. So 800 million people, can you believe that? What kind of a database is that? 800 million people. A lot of celebrities are using quizzes. Jay Shetty uses our software. He's found this really incredible as a way of moving people off his social media channels and onto his own database. So you can imagine what it's like having millions and millions of followers on Instagram but none of them are on your own database. If Instagram changes its algorithms, you're not able to reach your own people. So this is a great, quizzes are a great way to get people onto, onto your own database. Lewis Howe and Marie Folio have used this. And some of you are big fans of Chris Doe. Chris is a massive fan of this strategy as well. Okay, let's talk about why these are so powerful before we get in and build some stuff. Okay. All right. Some people are just lost for words with how good this is. Right? <laughs> okay. Why are these so powerful? So key couple of reasons to keep in mind. The reason that scorecards are so powerful is because there is one reason and only one reason why people buy anything. People buy because they want to resolve tension. If someone's ever bought from you, it's because they want to resolve tension. And here's how it works. They have a current reality that's not so great, that's less than perfect. It's not ideal, the current reality. They have an imagined desired reality that is much better. And they're imagining what it might be like to be in that desired reality. And then they've got obstacles and criteria that sit in the way that are stopping them from doing it on their own. So if you imagine the mental model of why people buy because there's current reality, which is separate from desired reality, and sitting in the middle are all the obstacles. That's why people buy. And that all those three things together create tension. And the tension is the precursor to every sale. If there's no tension, there's no sale. If people experience heightened tension, then they buy faster and they buy more. So some of you have presented to people what you do and they're just not engaging with it and you cannot find the tension. Other times you've met people and they've got really clear current reality, desired reality and obstacles and there's plenty of tension and they're ready to buy. 
So the reason that scorecards work is every single question that you ask someone establishes another little bit of micro tension. It heightens the tension and it actually spells out for people, this is your current reality, this is your desired reality, and here's your obstacles. So it's very, it's very explicit. It just tells people, this is what the tension looks like. You've, you're at 69% and you want to be at 85% or above, right? So those are the types of things that happen. So scorecards highlight the tension. The next thing is that people buy to resolve dormant desires as well as explicit desires. So there are the reasons that people give you as to why they're buying, but then there's all the stuff that sits below the surface. And you better believe there's always stuff below the surface, especially with complex sales. If ever you sold something like consulting or coaching, there's always the reason that they give you as to why they're bringing on a consultant or a coach. And then once you actually start the engagement, you find out all the real reasons. Some of you can relate to that. You've got coaching clients where you found out the real reasons two weeks or three weeks after you started with them. So there's always these things that are bubbling below the surface. Here's the funniest thing we've discovered over this journey with scorecards. People will tell a robot things that they will never tell a human. If you sit down with a customer or a potential customer and ask them 30, 40, 50 questions, they're going to close up. They're going to become guarded. However, if you present them with those exact same questions on a scorecard, they're going to just happily click the buttons and say what is on their mind. So you actually end up with a lot more information. So the scorecards are able to surface the underlying issues much faster. Okay, the next reason that these scorecards work is people act when there is a clear pathway for them and it's presented as a clear pathway. So I want you to imagine that essentially the same thing that people buy over and over is what they think of as the path of least resistance. So a path of least resistance is the fastest way to get from where they are now to where they want to be without hitting any of their obstacles. So once they're aware of their current reality, their desired reality and their obstacles, they want a path of least resistance. They don't want it to be convoluted. They want something that is fast and affordable and fits their situation perfectly. And that's what they're looking for. So all of you are selling something called a path of least resistance. Now, the beauty is that the more data you collect about people, the more you can present what you do as a path of least resistance that is perfectly suited to their situation. So more data means more customization, more tailoring to each person's situation. So when you present it based on the data. Next big insight is that people must connect logically and emotionally in order to buy. If people purely connect with you emotionally, <clears throat> they often might say that they like you, but they won't buy from you. If they connect with you logically, they might say it makes sense, but I'm not ready to get started. So we need both logic and emotion to connect. There's a question that doctors always ask, which is a very powerful question. And they ask their patients on a scale of one to 10, how bad does it hurt? On a scale of one to 10, how bad does it hurt? Oh, it's an eight. Ouch. It's a real eight at the moment. Now, the reason that's a powerful question is because it connects logic and emotion. When you have to score something on a scale of one to 10, how bad does it hurt? You're actually getting the two sides of the brain to talk to each other. So the emotion and the logic talk and they agree. And that way they integrate, which means that you're making a little step towards a decision. So when we start asking people questions about emotion and we put a scoring system on it, and then we present people with data based upon how they answered the questions, it's a great way to integrate logic and emotion, right? So really powerful. So scorecards integrate the left and the right brain. <clears throat> and the final reason that scorecards are super powerful, this one means a lot to me because I used to run events. When I would run events, I would run a big event twice a year, three times a year with five, six, 700 people. It had to go perfectly or else we lost a lot of money, right? Everything had to go just swimmingly. And you had to be available on that particular day. If there was a perfect client who couldn't make it to the event, too bad, so sad. The beauty of scorecards is that they manufacture demand 24-7. They're 24-7 available manufacturing demand. My belief is that 100 years ago, people became wealthy because they were good at manufacturing supply. They, could, they had a good supply chain. They could supply something. I think those days are past. There's too much supply. And actually, it's those who can manufacture demand that are the ones who make money these days, right? If you take something as simple as a pencil, if you go onto Amazon and search for a pencil, there's going to be 150 different results for pencils. So really the ability to produce something doesn't really do much. It puts you in competition with everyone else that produces that thing. 
So really, the money goes to those who know how to manufacture demand for things. In Amazon's case, it's Amazon. Amazon keeps most of the money. So scorecards are available 24-7 to manufacture demand. Okay, so that's all the theory. Let's get into how to do it. And before we do that, any questions so far? Does anyone want to put anything in the question? Or Bex, have you seen any questions? That I can... Just wanted to make sure that people aren't recording this session today. We will oh. send out a record. We're going to send out a recording. Okay, yeah, sometimes it pops up on our screen and we just, yeah, we have to approve that. We'll keep that in-house. Thank you very much. All righty. Okay, what if, the great question from Andrew, what if people don't know what they want? That's so typical, right? By the way, that is a really common issue, right? People know what their frustration is. They know what they're, what they're trying to solve. Your job as the business or the salesperson is to help them clarify current reality, desired reality, and obstacles. Now, if you do, you, if you're the one who can clarify for people what their current reality, desired reality, and obstacles are, that puts you in the driver's seat for making the sale. Great question. Would this work for book launches? Oh my goodness, I have done this for book launches. I love scorecards as a precursor for a launch. In fact, one of the projects that I'm working on at the moment is some new writing software that we've developed for authors. And we're about to do a scorecard campaign where people can fill in the scorecard as a way of pre-registering for that new software. Anytime I launch a book, I'm always going to do a scorecard campaign in the lead up to the book launch and then launch the book. I'm going to get five, six, 700 people who opt in and do the scorecard first and they know what it is that the book is going to help them with. And then we're going to get that out to marketplace. All righty. So there's lots of questions about how to do it. I can see those coming in. How to. All right, let's get into the how to. All righty. So before we get into the how to, I want to pose a theoretical conversation that will help you to really understand what we're building here. So I want you to imagine that you go to a marketing agency and you have a chat to a team of creatives and you say to your creative team, you've got a copywriter, a designer, and a coder. Right, so here's Mr. Copywriter, here's Mr. Designer, here's Mr. Coder. Actually, this guy looks like the designer. This one looks more like the coder, right? So we've got our three people person team in our little agency. And here's the brief. You say to the agency, here's what I want. I want a landing page that gets people to understand what their scorecard is that we're gonna get them to do. And it tells them why they should take the scorecard. Then I want that, when they click the button, I want it to go to a data capture form so I can capture their name and email address. Once they've done that, I want to present people with about 15 to 30 different questions, and we want to collect all of that data. And then once they've done that, I want to present them with dynamic results so that they get special results based on how they answered. So essentially, based on those answers, it's going to give them special results that pop up based on that. So you give them that as the design brief. You say, can you build that for me? And then by the way, when you're done, I want to have a Facebook post, a LinkedIn post, and a Twitter post to launch it. So please write me the content for that. And then when people fill in the scorecard, I want to have an email that I send them and I want to have a phone script so I can pick up the phone and talk to them and close a sale. So that's the brief. My question for you in the chat, how much would you expect to pay and how long would you expect that to take? So in the chat, how much and how long? Let's have a little look. All righty. Someone says $20 a month, chat GPT. Yeah, but would chat GPT be able to code it all up and put it all in place? It might give you the content, might give you the copy. 10 to 30,000 in three months. 6,000 is probably what I would have said. 5,000, 10,000, three months. Okay. So having done this many times before the software was available, we used to budget about six weeks and about six grand. So six, six to 8,000 pounds and about six weeks worth of work when we were building scorecards with that same design brief. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go and do this using AI tools and we're going to make sure that we can do this really nice and fast so that it all just happens through the uh, through the AI. Okay, so here's what we do. We go into our score app tool and we just go create scorecard, right? And then I say, use the AI setup wizard. Now, when you do this, I want you to do version one 
using the AI setup wizard. Version two, I want you to pick a template, right? We've got beautiful templates and you can have all your nice templates in version once we go to version two. But version one, I just want you to keep it super simple. Let's go and just say AI. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we say get started. What is it? It says, what's your primary goal? Do you want to generate leads, qualify and convert existing leads that you've got or improve client relationships? Let's just generate some leads for the business. Do you want to have a simple overall score, a single outcome or multiple scores? Let's have multiple scores. Okay, how would you describe your business? I'm going to say, I'm going to say a sales trainer. Let's do that. How would you describe your target audience? Now, you'll notice that AI has already started to try and figure you out and says, you probably work with sales managers or entrepreneurs or sales teams. I'm going to say sales teams. Okay, next. What do you want to help your clients to improve, to achieve, or to prevent by using a scorecard? Improve closing rates, achieve higher sales targets, prevent customer churn. Let's go improve closing rates. Pick a concept for the scorecard. Closing mastery, unleash your sales potential. The ultimate sales quiz, boost your closing rates. Cracking the sales code, unlock your closing success. Let's go with that one. I like that. Now choose what you'd like to score people against. Prospecting, negotiating, objection handling, sales process, closing techniques. Let's go sales process, objection handling, closing techniques. There we go. <clears throat> So I've got three things. So it sends all that information over to AI and it says, all right, here's the questions that we should ask. Now it's written the questions. The AI has actually written these questions out. So sales process, have you identified your target customer's pain points? Oh, that's a good question. Do you actively listen to your customers and ask them open-ended questions to understand their requirements? Great question. Do you build rapport and establish trust? Yep, great question. So we'll put those ones in. Objection handling, do you actively listen to your prospects' objections without interrupting them? Do you ask follow-up questions to clarify? That's a good one. Do you confidently handle objections by providing logical and persuasive responses? Do you provide specific examples? Great question. Okay, so we'll go there. Closing techniques, are you familiar with assumptive closing techniques? Do you, isn't that incredible? AI wrote all this. How the hell does it know all this stuff? It's read everything. Do you consistently ask for the sale at the end of your sales pitch? Are you comfortable handing objections? Do you regularly use trial closes? Do you have a clear understanding of the different closing techniques and when to use them? Okay, we've got some nice questions. So here we go. We've put together this. It says multiple scores, cracking the sales code, sales process, objection handling, 11 questions, create the scorecard. So here's the AI. It's just written 952 words, saving you seven hours. So in the end, the AI just wrote a thousand words of content and it saved you seven hours worth of work. So we'll go to the dashboard. We'll have a look at what it built. And it's basically gone and done all the work so far. So the first thing is you can see that it's already created a version one that, uh, that's ready to go. So let's go ahead and we'll publish this. We'll see what it looks like. Congratulations, your scorecard is live and here's the first link. Let's copy this and I'm going to put it into the chat. Anyone who wants to fill this in, you can fill it in. You don't have to give me the real details if you want. You can, if you want to, you can, you can just fill it in. It'll help with creating some data. So if you want to fill that in, go for it. <clears throat> but you'll notice this, the AI just wrote a launch tweet. So the first tweet that it wrote is, want to unlock the secrets to closing more sales? Take the cracking the sales code quiz and discover your closing success potential. Don't miss out. Click here to get started. It's already written a tweet just to go and launch that straight away. On top of that, it's gone and written its first campaign for this. It says, here's your first tweet. Here's your first Facebook post. Here's your first LinkedIn post. So very easy for you to go and launch this straight away. Let's go and have a look at what it built. <clears throat> Okay, so it's chosen an image of a nice little sales team kind of image. It's got unlocking your closing success, take the sales code quiz, answer 11 questions and we'll send you a personalized report. Discover how improving your closing technique will, will give you feedback on sales, objection handling and closing techniques. Let's take the scorecard. We'll go Daniel. Okay, so I'll go through here and I'll answer some questions. I'll do a few yeses and a few no's. I'll just go through. 
and do them. And bang, there we go. So I've scored, obviously I clicked between the two. So I've scored medium for all three of these, closing techniques, sales process and objection handling. So it, the AI has gone and coded this up and it's actually written these responses here. So sales process, your sales process score suggests that you've got solid foundations, but there's still room to improve. Focus on refining your sales process by identifying bottlenecks. Objection handling, your objection handling score indicates that you've got some proficiency in addressing objections. However, there's still room for improvement. Closing techniques, right? So it's gone all of there and it's now got a button for me to book a meeting. So straight away, we've now got the first part of the design brief. So when we said, when we actually went there and we said, okay, let's have a look at this design brief. We said we wanted a landing page, data capture quiz and dynamic results. We've got a version one of that straight away. It took a few minutes, but away we go. We've got a version one of all of that. Now let's have a look at, let's have a look at the results. So now some leads are coming in. In fact, we can see here, lots of leads have come in. And there's my one, Daniel Test. So I'll click on that. <clears throat> and there's my results. So these are all the questions that I answered. Here's how I answered each one of the questions. So if I'm picking up the phone and talking to this lead, I've got all of this information to hand. I can see exactly how they answered all of these questions. But it gets even better than that. I can hit the AI button here. And I can say, I want this person to have a sales email. So I'm just going to write a sales email to Daniel. So I hit the sales email. And it starts writing, Dear Daniel, I hope this email finds you well. I recently received your quiz results on cracking the sales code. <clears throat> Firstly, congratulations on your overall score of 64%. It's evident that you've got strong grasp of the sales process with notable score of 67% for understanding different closing techniques. Moreover, your ability to identify your target customer's pain points. So it actually goes into some of the exact questions that were answered. While your objection handling score of 50% shows room for improvement, your willingness to actively listen to objections and ask for follow-up questions demonstrates genuine interest in understanding your prospect's concerns. So it's going in and it's actually written a custom email that is specific to this person. So when, the, when I receive this, if I was to get this email, it's, wow, they've looked at my results. They've sent me a custom email about how I can improve. I want to talk to this company, right? So all I have to do is copy and send that. And away we go, we've got ourselves a sales email. If I'm feeling particularly brave and I say, actually, I want to pick up the phone, I want a sales call script, it's going to suggest a call script. Ring, ring, hello. Hi, can I speak with Daniel, please? Speaking, who's this? Hi, Daniel, it's Daniel Priestley from Dent Global. I noticed that you recently completed the, the cracking the code. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. Absolutely, Daniel, I see you scored particularly well on closing techniques. So it's actually just written a call script um, so that I can actually rehearse a call script before picking up the phone and talking to this lead. So it's giving me sales emails and sales content. If I go over here, look at all of these leads that have come through. That's a lot of great data. So now I've got some insights. 16 people started, 14 people finished, 48 visitors to the website. So now what I'm going to do is actually crunch the data. So this is how people answered all of these questions. It's really good. It's, have you identified your target customer's pain points? 20% <clears throat> of people said, no, that's what I would expect. Do you ask follow-up questions to clarify objections and gather more information? 36% said, no. Do you confidently handle objections? Ah, this one's interesting. 43% of people said, no, they don't. I'm going to hit the AI button. And I'm going to write a press article about that statistic. Navigating objections. Insights from a recent quiz reveal the importance of handling objections with confidence. In the dynamic world of business, objections are the inevitable part of the sales process. From hesitation, hesitant customers to skeptical prospects, objections can be seen as roadblocks for closing deals. However, the ability to confidently handle them, blah, 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 blah. So recently we launched a quiz and 14 people responded. Here's the results. Out of 14 individuals who participated in the quiz, 43% said no when asked if they confidently handle objections. So now I've got an entire 500 to 1,000 word press release about that one little piece of data. So I could literally send that off to any publication and say, hey, recently we just did a poll and we've actually got some data that we want to write a press release about. Are you familiar with the sumptive closing techniques? 29% of people said no. 
Let's go and write a blog post or a tweet or a LinkedIn post about that. Let's have a LinkedIn post. So here's my LinkedIn post. Attentional sales professionals, are you familiar with the assumptive closing techniques? According to a recent business quiz, 71% of respondents have already mastered this highly effective technique. If you're part of the 29% who are not familiar with it, don't miss out on the opportunity, right? So it's gone and written two versions. You can choose which version of that you want to use. So this is where AI is now taking your data and writing up the content about this. If we have a look at the scores, we can actually start having a look at the big scores, sales process, we can write press articles about this data, pretty much anywhere that we can find data, we're now being able to get the AI to write about it or do something with it. So essentially what you've now got is a tool that generates leads. Not only does it generate leads, it generates additional content that will generate more leads. So as soon as you've got leads coming in, you've now got data that you can talk about and that data that you talk about on social media is gonna bring more leads and that's gonna bring more data and that more data is gonna create more content. So it becomes a virtuous circle. If we go to the share button, you've got lots of different ways to share. So you've got Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, right? You can share using QR codes, you can have a chat, you can have the scorecard go into the chat on your website. You can have your scorecard as a full page on your website. You can have your scorecard as a pop-up, right? So it just pops up, start the quiz, and it can happen as a pop-up. So all of these amazing sharing opportunities that you've got there. So there's plenty of ways to share it, and it's helping you to do that as we go. So in the chat, let me know, what do you think of that? Is that impressive? Is that cool? Is that a, is that a good way of generating leads? A bit of wow, a bit of impressive. It's amazing. It's mind-blowing. Insanely clever. Yeah, really cool. Okay, so here's the thing you need to know about AI, right? AI, I want you to know that when it comes to AI, I want you to think of AI as baking you a sponge cake, but you as the entrepreneur or the professional need to do the icing of the cake. Right, so imagine that you go down to your local bakery and they've got this machine that churns out just standard sponge cake, but no one's icing the cake. No one's gonna buy an uniced sponge cake, right? It's gotta be nicely iced and your job is to ice the cake. So the AI is gonna create the sponge cake, you're gonna ice the cake. What does icing the cake mean? Icing the cake means that you've gotta put your stories, your case studies, your insights, your passion, your vision, your mission, all of the stuff that makes your business unique, you've got to take a little bit of that and put that in there and make sure that you ice the cake. So the AI is going to do most of the work, 80% of the work, it's going to produce all sorts of stuff. But you really, if you want to set it really apart from everything else, you've got to say, actually, this is the time where I'm going to use a real life case study of the time that I worked with Sarah Smith. This is the time where I'm going to share a bit of my insights or my history or my background. That is what I call icing the cake. So don't just simply let the AI churn out sponge cake and just say, okay, I'm just going to sell the sponge cake. You need to start leveling it up, leveling it up, right? So let me show you what it looks like to level this stuff up. <clears throat> so the, these examples that I'm about to show you, they took a version one and then they basically leveled it up. So here's an example of someone who leveled up their scorecard. This one is a festival quiz. What festival type are you? Take the vibe check. Meet your festival alter ego. See your personality traits. Learn some festival hacks and your chance to win two VIP summer festival tickets. Look out for bonus points. Now, this one categorized people as tribesmen, fancies, explorers, ravers, or zens. So it gives you your festival personality type. You can see that they've used an AI called Midjourney to generate these images. And these are AI generated images, probably took about 20 minutes to, to generate those images. But that has really definitely leveled up this scorecard, made it interesting. And then they've created these fun little personality types and they've used their own photo from a recent festival that they run. So this is what I mean by icing the cake. They're bringing their personality into this. They've started with a version one, and now this is a version two that's gonna be much better performing. Let me show you another example. This guy has blown me away. So this particular guy 
It turns out that there is a game that exists in the world called Warhammer. And this particular game, I don't even know much about it. It's not even a computer game. You've got these little figurines and they've got these big maps that they play on and they roll dice. It's a little bit like Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. But it's got a global community of hundreds of thousands of people who play the Warhammer game. And this guy is a Warhammer coach. He's now built a multi six-figure business coaching people all over the world how to play Warhammer better. So it's really wild, very niche. But he's done this by having a Warhammer 40K strategy IQ with your quiz. I have no idea what any of that means. Answer 30 questions, we'll send you a personalized report. Take our quiz to enhance your tactical decision-making, improve your army list, building strategies, analyze your game, receive feedback on game experience, pre-game preparation, in-game strategies and tactics, post-game analysis, and hobby aspirations. So he's gone and he's gone to the next level version two and he's built a, a multi six-figure business teaching people how to play Warhammer better. This one here, I love this one, Story Captain. These guys have created some cards, some playing cards, so you can codify your storytelling skills in business. And it says, what's your secret storytelling superpower? Discover your natural storytelling style. Unlock the story cards that will unleash your full potential. Take the quiz. Get scored in four key categories and get your free cards. Discover your style and pin down what's holding you back. Impact, insights, inspiration. Where are your barriers to success? Discover your style, reap the rewards. So now what they've done here is they've created some nice little images. They've put a photo of themselves here. So these are the co-founders of Story Captain. So they've got a bio about who they are and what their background is. Is this quiz for you? They've added a nice little section here about is the quiz for you, right? And they've really said here, talk to our strategic storytelling experts. So they've got another call to action down here. Once you've completed the quiz, you're going to be able to see this strategy session. This is what I mean by leveling up. This is really icing the cake. This is probably a version three or a version four scorecard. This one here, it's built for mobile. It doesn't look great on a desktop, but they've really gone in on making it a mobile first scorecard. Are you running a successful STR business, short-term rental? So this is obviously like an Airbnb type business. And they've gone and put in nice little bits here, getting by or rocking high. They've created their little report, all the companies they've worked with, a little bit of a video in there. Let me help you next. Let's go. So these are all leveled up scorecards. So <clears throat> what I'm saying here is that your version one can be an AI generated scorecard. Your version two can be a templated scorecard. Your version three could be something that you really add design elements and you really level it up and really ice the cake for real. And that is going to improve your conversions again and again. So Let's talk about getting started. And actually, before we talk about getting started, promotion. So I want to talk about promotion. So there's about 29 ways to promote your scorecard. We've actually created a document called the 29 ways to promote your scorecard. Once you've got yourself a scorecard, you will actually see, you'll see different sections where we can help you. So for example, we've got here in the courses, We've got these little courses that immediately pop up. So how to do SEO, scorecard for advanced features, getting sales, introduction to scorecard marketing. So all of that's there. We've also got the ability to get the book, Scorecard Marketing. We've also got a special setup guide, which is about, here we go, promoting, getting leads. There's lots of different ways here for you to make sure that you're setting up and that you're getting your that you're getting your scorecard in front of a lot of people let me share with you a few ways that have worked really well for me so over the last seven years i've every single time i've gone on radio i always give people the url as the call to action and it's really cool when i was on lbc radio hundreds of scorecards came in when i was on this dubai radio hundreds of scorecards and i do a little conversation i do a little interview and then the host always says, how can people reach you? And I say, visit the key person of influence scorecard. Just do a Google search for key person of influence scorecard, and that'll give you your score. And literally hundreds of people come in and take that. 
When I'm on stage, I use a QR code and people scan the QR code and then they get to go and get their score, which is really powerful as well. And in the platform, there's a little button there that's QR code generator and you can generate QRs, QR codes. I do podcast interviews and they always ask the question, how can people get in touch with you? We always say, take the scorecard and that goes into the show notes. If you've already got a website that's performing, let's say you've got traffic already going to a website, I encourage you to do a little pop-up that says, take the scorecard. One of the things that we noticed from this website is that they were already getting readers of their blog. They added the pop-up and they started getting between 50 and 80 leads per day filling in the scorecard. So a total transformation for the business. Some of you, you really only can talk to the right person and everyone else is a time waster. If you're not talking to the right person, then it's going to be a waste of time. Use the scorecard as a filter where only the right person gets given your scorecard, your contact information. So one of the things that you can do is you can create something called an audience. And in the audiences, so if I go into here, if I go into build and I go into the results page, Right, I can go in here and I can say, okay, I want to add a section. I just push the plus button. I want to add a section and it's a piece of content and it's going to encourage people to have a conversation with me. So I'll just put this little piece of content in, but I don't want everyone to see this. I only want people who answer a certain way. So I'm just going to say audience-based, right? I need to I need to create a new audience and I'll say this audience is only for people who say, do you answer this question with a no? And I'm going to say, okay, this is saying no. And then I go, I will then save that. Now, this is really cool because this piece of content will only be shown to people who answer the questions in a certain way. So this is a really cool way that if you want to give out your phone number, for example, but only for the right person, let's say you've got a question that says, do you have a budget for a consultant to fix this problem? And they say, yes. And you say, great, let's show you a piece of content that has my phone number on it or has my Calendly link on it. So that's, that's very powerful as well. All righty. Let me give you the final part here. Let's, let's bring this home so that we finish up on time and then we'll do a little bit of Q&A. So getting started, here's what I would like you to do. <clears throat> I would like to give you a special offer, a special offer. I was a New Zealander there for a minute, special offer. A special offer. Uh, and the special offer today is we're doing this thing called the 30-30 challenge. So the 30-30 challenge is for the next 30 days, if you sign up using the code that the URL that Rebecca will put into the chat, if you sign up using that link, you'll get a 30-day free trial of the score app software, right? So you get 30 days for free so you can test this all out. And secondly, is if you get 30 leads in the first 30 days, we'll then give you 50% discount off of your next month, right? So the following month will be 50% discount. So all we need to do is we just need to see that you get 30 leads. We see that you're using it and then we'll give you 50% off of month number two. It's free for the first month, half price for the second month if you get those first 30 leads. So how much is it? It's 29 per month for most of you. And if you're a bigger business, you might go up to the 89 a month plan, right? So 29 a month for most small businesses that want about hundred leads a month, but bigger businesses that want more like a thousand leads a month, then it's an 89 plan. But you won't pay anything in month one and it'll be half price for month two. And then after that, there's no contracts. You can switch it off whenever you like. There's, you can basically, even in month one, if it's not working for you, you just turn it off and you've paid nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Once you're in there, even during your 30-day free trial, you've got access to all of the templates that we've got. And we've got something like 60 or 70 different templates that are ready to go. You literally just add your logo, your brand to the top. And once you've added your logo and your brand, maybe you want to change a few of the images those templates are ready to go. I think of those as a version two. So the AI is version one, the template is version two, and then your own creation is version three. So you'll have access to those templates. You'll also have access to all of our AI tools while you've signed up. And in the next 30 days, we're also going to be running twice a workshop called Set Up and Score, where you're going to be able to work with our head of customer success called Lee. Lee is going to walk you through your setup and she's going to help you go from a version one to a version two, or she's going to help you get started and get those first 30 leads through the door. 
And she's super patient. She goes through step by step. She does lots of Q&A. She gets really technical. She takes over your screen and, and does it in front of the group. So she's really good at actually showing and telling exactly how to do it. While you're in your free trial, be sure to join the community. We've got a community of thousands of people who are doing scorecard marketing and they can give you their pointers and their tips and they can give you feedback on your scorecard. And all of that is included in the subscription. So essentially ongoing 29 a month or 89 a month, nothing for the first month, half price for the second month if you get the first 30 leads. Okay, so we can do some Q&A, but if you have to drop off now, I wanna leave you with a quick thought. And the thought is this, every lead that comes into your business is an asset. It's an asset for several reasons. It's an asset because it's going to produce a yield. There is an average yield associated with every single lead, right? Once you start generating leads, you will discover that there is just this average amount of money that comes in for every hundred leads that you generate. And what you'll also discover is that it doesn't just end in year one, those same 100 leads, if you look after them, will actually yield in year two and year three and year four as well, right? People keep buying and buying if you look after people on your list. Sometimes you're going to warm people up. Sometimes people are going to become repeat purchasers. So every lead is an asset. The other reason that I say every lead is an asset is because if ever you sell your business or you want to sell your business, the first question they always ask is how many people are on the database? And the second question is what do you know about the people on the database? Is it just name and email? And if you can say, I've got 10,000 people on the database and we know 50 things about every single person, that is one heck of, an, of a valuable asset. That's a reason for someone to buy your company on its own. So that alone is a perfect reason to build that asset in your business. And then the final thing I will say is the leads change lives. What I mean by leads change lives is I've seen people who've got identical businesses where two people have almost identical businesses, but one figures out the lead gen and one doesn't figure out the lead gen. And the person who's figured out the lead generation, their life looks very different to the person who's struggling with lead generation. If you can figure out lead generation, it really does change your experience of business because an influx of leads pushes prices up, which pushes profits up, gives you the pick of the clients when you choose. If you've got the data, you can pick and choose which clients you want to work with. So it's a life-changing experience having an influx of leads. Nice one. Okay, let's finish up. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you do start the 30-day trial today. And as I said, if you can generate 30 leads in the first 30 days, you get half price off month two. And make sure you join the workshop that we're running that is a bit more technical. And that's with Lee. And that's called Set Up and Score. Set Up and Score is a really great workshop to be on. Lots of technical details that we can go into. And Lee has a really good approach to just getting in there and helping you to get set up so that it's all working. Cheers, guys. I look forward to seeing how you succeed with this and enjoy, enjoy having a play with these new AI tools. All the best. Bye.